Hi guys! Today we are going to be reading our story for this week called Dog of the Sea Waves. This is Journey's Lesson 24. Hopefully, if you have already taken a look at our vocabulary and context cards, you've been thinking about what this story might be about. Hopefully, you started thinking that it might be about Hawaii, volcanoes, and maybe a, a seal. Hmm. Okay, so our genre for this story is realistic fiction. And we have read lots of stories that are realistic fiction, so we know that this is a story that could happen in real life. So it is made up, but it's something that could happen. So it will have realistic characters and events, things that happen. It's gonna have a plot with a beginning, a middle, and an ending. And it's gonna have details that help us picture the setting. Okay, our author and illustrator, so this is a story where the author, the person who wrote the story is the same as the person who wrote or did the pictures, the illustrator. His name is James Rumford, and it says, a longtime resident of Hawaii, James Rumford hopes his readers will learn aloha Aloha Aina, or to cherish these islands. Hopefully I said that right. As much as he does. Scattered throughout the pages of Dog of the Sea Waves are drawings of plants and animals that are found in Hawaii. Many of them are at risk of dying out. Rumford included these to show that Hawaii's natural beauty needs our protection. And as we read, we want to be thinking about our essential question, which is, what changes do volcanoes cause? Before we get started, let's preview our topic. So we know we're going to be reading about volcanoes. And this says, the Hawaiian islands are lush, green, and beautiful. It is hard to believe that they were formed from red-hot bubbling rock rising from deep inside the earth. When the melted rock cooled, it hardened into land and formed islands. Plants such as palms and animals such as seals found their way to the islands. Eventually, people did too. In Dog of the Sea Waves, you'll read a story of five young men who explored these volcanic islands long ago. You'll find out what happens when one of the volcanoes wakens from its rest. Wow. As we read our story, we also want to be thinking about the author's purpose. Why do we think the author wrote this story? And it says, as you read Dog of the Sea Waves, think about how the author describes Hawaii. So we saw already when we were reading about our author that he actually lives in Hawaii, right? And he really loves and cherishes the place where he lives. So that could be part of his purpose in writing this story and we want to be thinking about that as we read. Five brothers explore the Hawaiian Islands. Manu, the youngest brother, saves the life of an injured seal and the two become friends. When it's time for the brothers to go home, Manu is unsure if he'll ever see his friend again. Okay, and notice how the writing on this page 314 is different from the regular writing that we see in our stories. So this type of writing is letting us know that this is an introduction that's kind of setting the scene and giving us a little bit of background information. So now we know that one of the brothers has become friends with an injured seal um, when he saved his life and now they are having to separate and he, Manu, he's not sure if he's ever going to see his seal friend again. And on this page, we have a picture of an Oahu tree snail. Very interesting. And then we can see from our picture, we see our seal right here. It says, well, seals, there's two of them, swimming near an exploding volcano. And then there's the picture of the volcano exploding. Yikes. Look at the water, guys. It's very turbulent looking. Okay, page 315. In the days when the sun, the moon, and the stars guided birds with seeds in their bellies to these islands, when ocean waves brought driftwood teeming with life, 
when storms brought frightened birds in the clouds and insects on the wind, the Hawaiian islands grew green and lush. The streams and lagoons rippled with fish, and the forests flashed with the feathers of birds and the rainbow wings of insects. And we have a picture of a belted wrasse, I believe is how you say that. The Hawaiian Islands welcomed all life that made the long, long journey to its shores. And some 2,000 years ago, they embraced the first people to come. In those days of first canoes, first footprints, first campfires, there were five brothers who came from their home far to the south to explore these islands. They were Hoku, who loved the stars, Na'ale, who loved the sea, Opua, who loved clouds, Makani, who loved the wind, and Manu, who loved birds. And we have a picture of a Kamehameha butterfly. One night, soon after their arrival, Hoku said, See, my brothers, that new star I've discovered? It always points north. Everyone except Manu looked up at the sparkling North Star. Everyone except Manu began talking excitedly about all the other new things they had discovered. New things, Manu exclaimed. I miss the old things. Where are the coconuts, the bananas, the sweet potatoes? And how about the pigs, the chickens, the dogs? We'll go home and bring these things back here with us, said Hoku. We're coming back, Manu cried. I don't want to come back. I just want to go home. But home was a long ocean voyage away, and there was much to do before they could leave. Food and water to gather and sails to repair. So no one spoke. So it sounds like the five brothers have come to explore, and they are all four, well, four of them out of five are wanting to go back home and get some things and bring them back to the Hawaiian Islands to settle down. So it sounds like all of the brothers are excited about this, except for Manu. He does not seem to want to come back. He wants to go back to their home and he wants to stay there, it sounds like. Page 318. The next day, as the brothers were exploring a lagoon, Manu spotted an animal lying at the water's edge. It's a dog, my brothers, a dog. At last, something familiar in this strange land. But when they got close, they saw that it was like no dog they had ever seen before. It had flippers for legs, a fish's tail, and the body of a dolphin. And it was badly hurt. Manu tried to calm the animal. He brought cool water and cleaned the wound. He built a shelter against the sun and kept the fur wet with seawater. The brothers left Manu. They had no time for an animal that was going to die. They had to prepare for the long sea voyage home. So this is a creature that the brothers have never seen before. At first they thought it was a dog. Do you guys know what kind of creature it is? A seal, right? So it looks like all the brothers have given up on this poor seal, thinking that it's going to die. And Manu is the only one who did not give up. And guess what? But the animal didn't die. I will call you dog of the sea waves, Manu said on the third day as he fed him fish. At the end of the week, the two had their first swim together and before long, they were playing tag in the waves. Manu made up a silly chant. Dog of the sea waves, dog with no paws, dog with no ears, dog with no wag, we're friends. Manu giggled and dog of the sea waves tickled his cheek with his whiskers. And there's a picture of them swimming together. They look like pretty good buddies. And we have a picture on this page of, it's called granulated, Cowrie. 
Come help me dry berries and roots for the voyage home, called Hoku. We need fish, scolded Naale. There's water to gather, scowled Opua. And sails to repair, cried Makani. But Manu pretended not to hear. Instead, he and Dog of the Sea, Waves, played together and got into all kinds of trouble. They terrorized the fish Naale was trying to catch. They made a mess of the beach where Hoku was drying food. They played with Makani's ropes and accidentally pulled Opua's go gourds off the boat, tripping Makani, who fell into the water. No one laughed. The two were separated and Manu was put to work. So Manu's brothers are doing all of this work preparing for their voyage home. And it sounds like they're getting a little upset with Manu because he would rather play with his new friend than help them. Manu gathered berries for Hoku. He caught fish for Naale. He fetched water for Opua. He twisted rope for Makani. But every evening after his work was done, he slipped off to meet his friend and they played in the waves until it got too dark to see. Then Manu swam ashore and Dog of the Sea Waves went hunting for food. After many months of hard work, the boat was finally ready to leave. At the last moment, Manu dived into the water to say goodbye to Dog of the Sea Waves. As the brothers yelled for Manu to get aboard, Dog of the Sea Waves brushed his whiskers against Manu's cheek, then disappeared beneath the waves. That would be really hard, wouldn't it, guys, to have to say goodbye to a really good friend? Okay, and on this page we see a picture of a Hawaiian raspberry. Hmm, looks yummy. I wonder if it's like a raspberry here that you can eat. Ooh, we can tell from this picture that something is happening. Let's find out. The brothers sailed down the island chain. When they came to the last island, Opua said, Is that a cloud on the side of that mountain? Or smoke? Let's go see. Curious, the brothers anchored their boat in a quiet bay and swam ashore. Halfway up the mountain, Makani felt a warm wind and hesitated, but his brothers told him not to worry. After a few more steps, Manu noticed that the birds were silent, but his brothers paid no attention. Then, a jolt. The earth heaved up and slammed the brothers to the ground. Deep cracks appeared, then flames. Hoku grabbed Manu's hand and the brothers fled down the slope. But a river of fire cut them off from the sea and forced them to the cliffs. The earth shuddered and the five brothers jumped into the sea far below. What do you think is happening? Okay, on this page we have a picture of a, I'm not sure how to say this, but it, it looks like Wakiu, and it's uh, an insect, a Wakiu bug. But the sea they landed in was a monster. It thrashed from the earthquakes. It hissed from the burning lava. It lashed out at the brothers and grabbed Manu. In an instant, he was gone. Makani filled his lungs with air and went to the very depths of the ocean, but there was no sign of Manu. Opua, with his voice like thunder, shouted for Manu above the crashing waves, but there was no answer. Naale, who loved the sea, begged it to be calm, but it wouldn't listen. All this time, Manu was fighting to get to the surface, but the sea wouldn't let go. Then he felt the whiskers. Manu clasped his arms around Dog of the Sea Waves, and up they went. Oh, so Manu first saved him, and now he is saving Manu. That's beautiful. Okay, on this page, there are some interesting things happening. So let's first talk about our two little creatures that we see here. We have a dragon moray. Looks like some type of, oh, it's a moray eel, okay. I was going to say it looked like a, some kind of big worm, but I guess it's an eel. Okay, and then over here, 
Look at this guy. It's a crab with claws like pom-poms. It's kind of weird, right? A pom-pom crab. I mean, it's kind of cute. Looks like a little cheerleader. But yeah, I don't know, kind of weird. Okay, so the other thing that's happening on this page over here, it says the sea they landed in was a monster. Remember how we've been talking about literal versus non-literal uh, meanings? So when we say, or when the author says that the sea was a monster, is that literal or non-literal? What do you think? So it's non-literal, right guys? So then the next part of this paragraph, um, it's talking about the ocean as if it's a person. And when authors do something like that, we call that personification. A good example of personification on this page is when it says, it lashed out at the brothers and grabbed Manu. Okay, so is the sea actually lashing out and grabbing him? To me, that sounds more like something that a human would do. So personification is when an author gives human-like qualities to something that is not human, such as, in this case, the ocean. Okay, let's keep reading. It was Hoku who spotted them. The brothers raced toward Manu and cradled him above the waves. Manu, Manu, they cried over and over as they made their way to the boat. And to Dog of the Sea Waves, they chanted their thanks. Dog that swims the depths, dog that braves the currents, dog that knows the sea, dog that cares for our brother. The brothers then weighed anchor and headed for the southern sea and home. Manu stood on the deck and listened to Dog of the Sea Waves barking goodbye. We'll be back, Manu shouted. Okay, before we make our prediction, let's check out this little guy over here. This is my favorite little creature in this story. This is the happy face spider. And he is a spider whose back has a pattern like a smiley face. The first time I read this story, I couldn't believe that that was a real spider. So I actually looked it up and found some really cool pictures of it. Apparently it's a very, very tiny spider. So you would have to be, you'd have to look at it very closely, possibly even through a magnifying glass to see that happy face. So yeah, quite an interesting little creature indeed. Okay, time for a prediction. Do you guys think that Manu is going to be reunited with Dog of the Sea Waves? Or do you think that they might never see each other again? Let's find out. And when they returned, they came with their families. They embraced the land and made it their home. And there's our picture. It looks like he did get to come back and be with his friend again. Awesome. You enjoyed our story, Dog of the Sea Waves, and I'll see you soon.